Today on Passion for Food, I'll show you how to make the best meatloaf in an air fryer. Now, after some experimentation, I actually think air fryers might be the ideal tool for meatloaf. It helps us really get that crust on the outside without drying out the inside. Just look at how insanely juicy this is. Now, this is one meatloaf that doesn't even need gravy. Let's get started and I'll show you how to make this. Now, this is one time I really love my food processor. We could chop all of this real fine by hand, but we're gonna save about 10 or 15 minutes doing it in the old Food Pro. And I have a classic combination of carrots, celery, and onions here. Garlic would also be a really great addition, but it does change the flavor profile pretty dramatically. So sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't, just depending on my mood. And we're just going to process these until they're nice and fine. Now the reason we're adding these, not only are they going to add a great depth of flavor, but this is actually going to be all of the moisture that we're going to add to our meatloaf as well. You see a lot of meatloaf recipes where they're pouring milk or other things like that in there. We're not going to do that. All of our moisture is going to come from our aromatics. And we don't even really have to worry about over-processing this. If we turn this into a vegetable smoothie, well, actually, that's fine. We don't want any big chunks. You want it to be nice, small pieces like this. But we're not going to dump our aromatic vegetables straight into some meat. I do like cooking this briefly first with about a tablespoon of butter. I like to do this mostly just to soften them up a little bit. Nobody wants to eat meatloaf and be crunching down on little pieces of carrot. That's just no fun. And to speed that process along, I'm going to add about half the seasoning for the dish at this point. One teaspoon of salt. After sautéing for two or three minutes, we want to go ahead and round this out with about two tablespoons of tomato paste. That's about half a can. If you'd rather just use ketchup here, that'll work. We're just going to continue sautéing this for another minute or so. That tomato paste will actually start to caramelize, which really adds some amazing flavor for us. You should be able to actually smell that caramelization as it happens. But once we're happy, we're going to go ahead and let that cool for just a couple of minutes. This is already cooled, and if we look closely, we can see it's dissolved off all that caramelization from the bottom of our pot. That's just what we want. Now, to that, we're going to add one egg. This isn't always necessary, but it helps bind things together, especially if you're using coarser ground or home ground meats. And we're also going to add about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Now that might seem a little counterintuitive. You're thinking, hey Graham, we're trying to make this super juicy meatloaf. Why are we putting dry breadcrumbs into it? Now, apart from just stretching the recipe out a little bit, what I think is happening, and I can't prove this scientifically, but I think the breadcrumbs actually act as little sponges, absorbing the fat and rendered juices from the meat as it cooks, rather than just letting it run out of the meatloaf. And this is when we want to add the second half of our seasoning, cracked black pepper to taste and an additional teaspoon of salt. Just as a general rule, I like to use about a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat. Give this a quick mix and then it's time for our meat. One pound of 80-20 ground beef along with one pound of 80-20 ground pork. Please don't try and use leaner meat. You're just going to wind up with a dry meatloaf. I do like to add about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce here as well. Not too much, it's very strong. And your hands are really the only tool worth considering to try and get this done. So we're just going to work this mixture together until we have it thoroughly combined. With the two different meats, it might take a minute. You don't want to squeeze too much. We don't want to turn this into like meat pate or anything. So just mix it around with those vegetables and everything else until we're happy with its level of mixification. I actually don't like mine to be completely homogenous. That way you get these little lumps that are just pure pork and beef, and it's really nice. And I just like forming it into a rough loaf shape right in the bowl here. Now the air fryer I have uses these little trays instead of a basket. And I'm not going to use any tin foil or parchment paper or anything because I want that air to be able to circulate down around the meatloaf. I want as much crust on my meatloaf as possible. But if you have one of those basket models and you're concerned about being able to get the meatloaf out of the basket, you can just lay in a layer of parchment paper or tin foil to lift the meatloaf out with. That will work just fine. And you can, of course, cook this in a regular oven. I'll include times for conventional cooking on the blog. Once our air fryer is preheated, we're going to go ahead and cook this for 18 minutes at 400 degrees, which for my air fryer was the default setting. 
But while that cooks, it's not meatloaf without a deliciously sticky sauce to go on it, so let's make one. Starting off with about a fourth of a cup of ketchup, although honestly I don't really measure this, we're just looking for equal parts of ketchup, mustard, and sugar. I like to use coarse ground mustard, but the regular yellow mustard will work just fine as well. And with the sugar, I would normally suggest using brown sugar, except that I don't really keep brown sugar around because I have this jar of molasses that's probably going to last me like five years. And molasses plus sugar, well, that's what brown sugar is. I also like to add just a splash of this garlic chili oil to kind of round it out. That's definitely optional. I just like that little bit of sweet heat. We just want to get that thoroughly combined. Then once our meatloaf is done its first cooking cycle, we're going to go ahead and pull that out and get real saucy with it. Be sure and get down around the sides too. This sauce is going to caramelize beautifully as we air fry this a second time, this time at 300 degrees for another 18 minutes. But after that second 18 minutes is finished, do not open the air fryer. Just leave the meatloaf in there and leave it alone for at least 10 minutes. 15 would be better. That allows the residual heat to finish cooking the meatloaf without drying it out and lets those juices just redistribute, leading to one of the moistest meatloafs you'll ever see. I mean, just look at this. How ridiculous is that? Who would want to put gravy on this? And you can see those little bits of whole pork still in there. That is just beautiful. Let's go ahead and serve a couple of slices over my sour cream mashed potatoes. Check out the link in the top right for that recipe. This would also be great on top of rice, beside pasta, or my all-time favorite, the next day meatloaf sandwiches. So what foods are you passionate about? Let me know in the comments below and I might just make my own version. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Fashion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future recipes. And check out one of the other awesome videos playing on the screen now. This has been Graham with Passion for Food. Now, not all meatloaf actually needs an egg, but I typically do add one. It does add a bit of a frog in the bog. Cut!